Hello again and welcome back to my course on Excel for Mac 2019. This is Deb and I am going to be giving you an overview of the Excel window in this module. So really the only aim of this module is to really just get you familiar with what you're looking at when you open up Excel for the first time, which is exactly what we're going to do right now. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to go to my dock and I'm going to click on Microsoft Excel. And this is the screen that I get. So if you note in one of the previous modules, we came into here when I was explaining that this is kind of similar to the backstage area in the Windows version in many ways. But what you see here is I have a home button and that will essentially take me to a list of my templates. And then underneath that, I have a recent list and you can see some of the files that I've accessed recently listed down there. And as you can imagine, if you double click on any one of these, it will open them in Excel. I also have a pinned section just here. And you can see that there are a few different files that I actually have pinned. So these are the ones that I access all the time. And you can do that to any of your files or documents or even spreadsheets in this case, just by hovering over and you'll see that you get a little pin icon. And if you click that, it will add it to your pinned list. So really it's just a, a quick way of being able to access a list of documents that you use frequently. And then finally, we have a shared with me area. And I can see that currently no one's decided to share any files with me. That's OK. But if they did, they would be listed in here. So these are just ways to quickly jump to your most recent, your pinned and your shared files. Now, when it comes to templates, you can see we have a few listed at the top here. So we have a blank workbook. We have uh, we can take a tour of Excel if we wanted to. If we want to make a list, we have a template for that. We have a, a totaled list and also track my tasks. And you'll see just above there, we have a link to more templates and that will take you to the full list of templates that you have access to in your version of Excel for Mac. Now templates can be super useful if you don't want to start from a blank spreadsheet. So if you kind of know what you want to do, so say I'm planning my next holiday and I don't want to just start with a blank spreadsheet, I could choose to use this maybe trip planner template, which gives me a good basis on which to start. So templates can be really, really useful. So remember where they're located. And again, in this menu bar underneath, we have recent and that's where I can see all my recent files. Now you can see here that I actually have a little warning symbol over my recent. And I can see that this second file listed just here, that's the one with the warning signal. And what that actually means is that I have this file open in another application. So currently it can't synchronize and I'm actually fine with that. I'm using this file on a different laptop, so I'm OK with that warning symbol there just for the moment. But just be aware that if you get that little symbol, it means that there is some kind of problem or issue with some of your files. Underneath that we have shared. So again, this is just a quick way of jumping to your shared files. And then finally, we have the option to open. And this is where you can go in and you can find a file that you have saved on your Mac or in other locations. So very easy to open something as well. Now, what we're going to do here is we're just going to open a new blank file. So I'm going to go back to new. And I'm going to double click on blank workbook. So this is how it's going to look when you open a new blank workbook. Starting at the top, we have that menu bar, which we looked at in an earlier module. If I click on Excel, this is where you'll find things such as your preferences. So this can be a handy area to go to. I would say this is probably akin to file options in the Windows version. So this is where you can go to set some of your preferences or your options, set Excel up exactly how you want it to look. So remember that that is there. You also have in here edit. Now you'll find that a lot of the commands that you can find under this menu system at the top are repeated on the ribbons within Excel. So there are essentially two ways of doing everything. So I could choose to cut something using the edit menu or I could go to the home ribbon where I have a cut option in there. So you'll find a lot of repeats as you go through these menu items. 
but definitely worth having a little look through there and just becoming familiar with the kinds of things you can do from the menu system. Now underneath that, in the header bar, if we start over on the left hand side, we kind of have this traffic light system, which if you've never used a Mac before, this will be something that's new to you. Now the red button here, if I just click away, the red button will allow you to close the particular workbook that you're working on. The amber or the yellow will allow you to minimize that file down into your dock. And I can just click back down into my dock to bring that back up. And the green button here, if I hover over, I have a few different options. So I can choose to work in full screen mode, which essentially gets rid of that menu and gives me a little bit more room. And if I just push my mouse up to the top, I can get that back again. And I can choose to exit full screen. And I can also tile window to left of screen, like so. Or I can tile window to the right of the screen. So again, what I would liken these two in the Windows version would be the automatic snapping that you get in the later versions of Windows. So if you're using Windows 7, 8 or 10, you know that you can pull a worksheet over to the left or to the right and it will kind of snap to take up half of the screen. That's a very similar feature that we have here. What we have next on this heading bar is auto save. So mine's currently set to off because I'm not saving to the cloud. But if you do want to save to the cloud, you can just slide that slider across to turn that on. And then we have the quick access toolbar. Now again, this is something that's available in the Windows version in all of the Microsoft applications. This is a little toolbar that you can customize and you can add commands to this toolbar, which just makes them a lot quicker and easier to access. So currently you can see I have save, I have undo, and I have redo on my quick access toolbar. But if I want to add any command, if I click the drop down, I have a few common ones that I could pick from there. So if I wanted to add new document, I can do that. And you can see I get the icon. But if I wanted to access all of the different commands that I have, I can go down to more commands and it will jump me into my ribbon and toolbar. And you can see here, I can go through and I can select any command to add to my quick access toolbar. And these are all grouped together. So currently I have popular commands, but if I wanted to see everything, I could say all commands. And that's gonna give me a big, very long list of all of the commands that are available in Excel. And I can add any of them to my quick access toolbar. So for example, if I find that I am always aligning objects to the center, I can select that. I can click on my arrow and it's going to add it to my quick access toolbar. Similarly, if I want to delete things in my quick access toolbar, I can do that from here as well by clicking the little minus at the bottom and that will get rid of anything I want in there. I can also reorder by dragging and dropping my commands around. So you can really kind of arrange them how you see fit. Once you're happy with your customizations, just click on save and close. And you can see there, I now have my new order of commands. So a really useful little feature that I would recommend that you customize with all of the commands that you use most frequently. Moving all the way over to the right hand side, we have a search sheet option. So if you're looking for a particular uh, cell or word or phrase or something like that, you can type that into here. And if you click the drop down, you can choose to search specifically in this sheet, or you can search across the entire workbook, which will be however many sheets you have. There's also an advanced search. And if you click on there, you can really go in and get a little bit granular as to exactly what you're searching for. And you'll also find underneath here, you have a replace. So that's kind of a quick way of getting to the find and replace options in Excel. So remember, you have that available at the top also. And then finally, underneath this little smiley face, if we click that, that's basically to give feedback to Microsoft. So you can tell them what you like, or you can tell them something that you're not particularly happy with. Now, directly underneath this header bar, we have our ribbon tabs. So home, insert, draw, page layout, so on and so forth. 
Now again, you should be reasonably familiar with this structure if you're coming from a Windows environment. What you'll find is that on each of these tabs you have commands and those commands in general are grouped together by type. So I can see here in this first little group I have paste, cut, copy and format painter. So those are all of my editing options. I then move on to a group which contains my formatting options. I then have my alignment options. I've got some text wrapping. I have number formatting, conditional formatting, so on and so forth. Now you may notice that on the Windows version, these different groups have the name of the group listed underneath. Now currently, I don't have that setting turned on. And that's what I really want to point out. It is just a setting. So essentially it's personal preference. If you don't like to have them turned on because they take up a little bit more real estate on the screen, then you can keep them turned off. I'm actually gonna turn them back on just to show you how you can do it. So I'm gonna go up to my screen. I'm gonna click on Excel and I'm gonna to go to my preferences and I'm gonna to go to view. And right in the bottom, I'm gonna turn on this option here, group titles. I'm just gonna put a tick in the box, click on close, and there we go. We now have clipboard, font, alignment, number, so on and so forth. So that really is personal preference. Another thing I'd recommend that you turn on, and I think I already have this turned on, but if we jump back into preferences, and go to view, I would recommend you have function screen tips turned on. So what that essentially means is if I close this down again, if I hover over any of these commands, it's gonna give me a little screen tip as to what exactly that command does. So you can see here when I hover over Format Painter, it says copy formatting from one location and apply it to another. So those can be really useful if you're not particularly sure what a command does. Now again, I would recommend that even if you are familiar with the Windows version, you do just very quickly run through these different tabs and just take a look at exactly what app options you have on these different ribbons. You should find that they're fairly similar to what you're used to. Underneath the ribbons, we have our name box, and this is standard across Excel in either the Mac or the PC version. I'm gonna talk about the name box a lot more in later modules. We then have the formula bar, so as you would expect, this is where you can type in or edit your formulas. We then have the main spreadsheet underneath. So this is where you're gonna start entering in your numbers or your text or whatever it is that you're doing. Now, every Excel spreadsheet is a grid structure made up of columns and of rows. And the columns are alphabetized and the rows are numerical. And if you're not familiar with Excel, the way that it works is that if I was referring to this particular cell that I have highlighted, I would refer to it as cell D8. And you can see that confirmed in that name box, D8. So cell references, again, if you're not familiar with them, is a really important basic concept when you're working with Excel in any version. And as I said, more about that in later modules. Moving down to the bottom, this is where we have our worksheet tabs. So currently, because I've just created this, I just have one sheet that says sheet one. But I could, if I wanted to, add more sheets. So if I click on the plus, it's gonna give me sheet two, plus again, sheet three, so on and so forth. Now this is the standard naming convention given to new sheets, but of course you can change the name of those sheets as well. And this is where if you're not used to using a Mac, this will be slightly different. If you remember, as I said at the beginning, in order to right click when you're working with a Mac, if you hold down control and click your mouse or click your trackpad, that is how you will get your menu. So you can see from here, I could rename this to whatever I want it to say. So I'm gonna call it summary. Okay, so remember control, click, to bring up that menu. And there's lots of different things I could do with this sheet. I could change the tab color if I wanted to, I can protect it, I can move it, I can copy it, rename it, delete it, so on and so forth. And then finally, right at the bottom, we have what we call the status bar. And what you'll find in here currently is if we look over to the right hand side, we have our different views. And again, this is the same in the Windows version. So currently I am in normal view, but I also have access to page layout view, 
and page break preview. And again, I'll explain what each of these are as we go through the course. And then finally, we have our zoom slider. So if you need to zoom in, you can just drag that slider up or down. Also remember what I said at the beginning, you can use gestures. If you're using a trackpad, I can do a pinching gesture to move in or move out or zoom in and zoom out, I should say. So that is a quick overview of the Excel screen, exactly what it looks like when you open up Excel. In the next module, we're going to talk a little bit about those mouse and trackpad features. So please join me for that. Thanks for watching. If you're not a subscriber, click below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. And click over there to get the complete Excel for Mac 2019 beginners course. And click over there to watch the complete set of Excel Mac videos in this playlist.